Hello, space catechins. How the heckity heck are you? Ah, that's great, because I am in the mood for telling you the story of royal fleas. No, not reading the book, reading the story. You can see that up here. I'm going to tell you how I came up with the idea and how I made it and what I'm going to do with it in the future. I've got here a big old pile of stuff that I'm going to show you a few bits from. So I guess going back a little way, let's start from the very beginning. So my first book was Vincent and the Vampires and that kind of had a very long and extracted period of time from when I first had the idea when I was at university to kind of making dummy books of it, sending it off to publishers because self-publishing wasn't really a thing when I first left university. Eventually, after some years, I won't go into a how many, I did actually self-publish it and it was doing really well and I sat back in, I think it was, let me think, when was it? Beginning of 2012, I sat back and I thought, do you know what, that's great, but what next? And my husband said to me, we are in the year of the Diamond Jubilee. Haven't you written a story about the Queen? And I remembered that, yes, I had. So in those intervening years between when I'd started to know, when I first knew that I wanted to do children's picture books, I had written loads of ideas down. Uh, I'd got to the stage of dummy books, um, if not just written down in, um, in sort of little thumbnail form. But I had this dummy book of royal fleas and it was a story about the queen and her dogs because she's very famous for having corgis and the idea came up to me I suppose I mean gosh this is going back a long time so I'm trying to remember what sparked that idea in me and I think it was just another one of those what if moments. What would happen if the queen's dogs got fleas because there is this joke about how the Queen is so posh she doesn't go to the toilet and you know she so she, how could her dogs possibly get fleas yeah so I had that what if moment and that's what I think sparked the story of royal fleas and I needed a character in it who was kind of unlikely an unlikely character to save the day so I decided to have a little girl called Sophie who I'm thinking she's probably around about the age of seven maybe so maybe just slightly older than the picture book age but that's a good thing because when you're writing stories um, you need to the, the characters it's always a good idea to have a character that's a similar age to the audience that you're hoping will read your books but having them just a teensy bit older gives them that that someone to look up to kind of thing so so having a, a little girl who was seven was was quite quite a good heroine for the story so what I did first really after after doing my dummy book which has disappeared into the ether I started to make my layouts. I think I must have done thumbnails somewhere but I do not know where they are. So I've got some layouts to show you. I had decided to self-publish in exactly the same way as I'd worked on Vincent and the Vampires and that was through well it was then called Create Space but is now called KDP and you get I mean it was a very almost exactly the same process they've updated KDP if you're doing it through create space or KDP as it is now they will give you set sizes so you can't just say well I'll have any size I like you need to look at what sizes they can print in to start with and I knew that they printed in eight inches by eight inches so a square book because that's what I'd done with Vincent and the vampires so I decided that that was what I would do with Royal Fleas. So front cover looks like this. I did an eight by eight inch layout 
and I decided what I was going to have on the front cover would be a corgi with some fleas dotted around it but I hadn't got as far as thinking about what the background was going to be so that came a little bit later so this is one of this is one of the layouts from inside the book and you can see that I laid out the drawing exactly the same size as I wanted it to be and then I knew that uh, my format for the whole book just to keep it nice and simple because I didn't have very long to do the whole process in I decided to have on one page I'd have the text and a little vignette of the story and on the opposite page I'd have an illustration that was relevant to that text so I carried on doing the layouts and then when I was happy with that I started on the artwork and I pretty much worked in the same way that I'd worked for Vincent and the Vampires and that is to make the illustrations and cut them out so here for example you'll see some railings behind which Sophie and Miss Fig were standing and then once I'd done all the larger sort of background pieces like this and like this for her bedroom I started to work on all the little bits so here is my bag of little bits I haven't looked at these for the best part of 10 years so it's quite nice to remind myself of them here's a nice picture of the Queen So I painted them and then cut round them with a scalpel blade or an exacto knife I think they're sometimes called and then scanned them in there's a picture of the bed I scanned them in and then on Photoshop moved them around or resized them or changed the colour slightly once I'd scanned them in, moved them around, made sure they were okay, made sure there wasn't too much shadow behind the pieces of work, then I saved them into InDesign um, as a document. And if you're wondering how I go about doing that, then watch next week's video because that's all about how I format things in InDesign. Once I'd finished putting it into InDesign, then I saved it both as an InDesign document, but also as a PDF. I exported it as a PDF. And that is what I uploaded onto KDP for my manuscript. So you have to do your manuscript and your cover separately. If you want to see how I got it onto KDP, then there should be a little cardy pops up there somewhere for you to have a look at. So, what do I do with it next? Now that I have uploaded it to KDP, I've ordered myself a few author copies so that I can sell them. I had um, some summer book events to do, so I got out there to, to see those people. But I thought immediately, well, why not send one to the Queen and one to Prince William and Kate? Because at the time, they didn't have any children. They were still fairly newly married. So I thought, well, do you know what? It might be a nice idea to send them some. See what happens. And I got back two letters. If you read the book itself, it talks about how Sophie writes to the Queen to tell her that she thinks her dogs have fleas she gets back a thick white and thoroughly ironed envelope from Buckingham Palace and I got one from ER that's Her Royal Highness and one from the other ER Her Other Royal Highness with a, a C on the back C C for Catherine okay this is what it says Buckingham Palace. Dear Mrs. Mariner, the Queen wishes me to write and thank you for your letter enclosing your book for children, Royal Fleas, which you have sent to Her Majesty as a present. The Queen was touched by your kind thought in sending her your book. I am to thank you again for writing in this Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee year. Your sincerely, sincerely Mary Morrison, Lady in Waiting. And I had a similar thing from 
the Duchess of Cambridge from St James's Palace which was I thought pretty nice because they must get sent hundreds and probably thousands of gifts every year so it's nice for them to recognize that Royal Fleece has consistently been my best-selling book, whether that's going out to book events or um, going into schools or like recently when we've had the Platinum Jubilee, that book has flown off the shelf. And I think it's just because it somehow catches the imagination. It's funny. People look at the title and, and laugh and it was just absolutely pure luck that I hit on a great title because it tells you what the book's about and it's also quite amusing. When I go into schools and see children what I like to do is some sort of activity with them and it has to be very much relevant to their age group. So for some of the older ones, although the book is maybe a little young for them once they get to sort of six or seven years old, they can use their skills. So one of the things I like to do with them is to do a letter to the Queen, like this. So it says at the top, in Royal Fleas, Sophie writes to the Queen to give her some advice. What advice would you give the Queen? So I'm currently coming to the end of a run of books. I've had to reorder this book several times and each time I get, I usually buy several hundred copies in one go. Um, and I'm kind of getting down towards the last few books. I've probably got 40 or 50 left. And I'm wondering what I should do. Should I reorder some? Or is there another way of doing this? I like to sell the ones that I've had printed myself, that I've had in my hands, that I can sign myself, I can see the quality of them, and I can, yeah, quality check them before they go out to my customers. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! Next week I am going to show you how I digitally add my illustrations and my text to a file so that I can send it off either to an online publisher or to a printer. If you want one of my remaining copies of Royal Fleas before I completely sell out, well, you know what to do. The link is down below. I'm off to cook a cuckoo. I will see you next week. Nanu nanu.